Hello and welcome to section 4.2. This one's on the natural exponential function. So this is your base E. So like last section we talked about bases being uh, numbers. E, lowercase e especially, is an important number. That's the natural base number. Um, the natural base number itself is like 2.718288 blah blah blah. It goes on forever. Uh, it's one of those numbers that we have in math um, that is represented by a symbol rather than uh, the number. It's generated by a formula um, 1 plus 1 over n that whole sum raised to the nth power uh, and we just represent that by the letter e instead so you're gonna see a natural base e and we're gonna see that quite a bit in this uh, this chapter anyway the first thing that they're going to ask you to do is they're just going to ask you to evaluate it. So if I tell you f3, they're asking you to take e to the third power, which, again, we use our calculator. Uh, e, by the way, is usually located above the ln button uh, on your TIs. Uh, it's in blue or yellow, depending on your calculator or age of it. Um, and it's the third from the bottom left. So... Um, but anyway, we type in 3 or e to the third, which would end up giving you 20.08554 or something to that effect. And again, they, you can put any number in the, that you wish, um, but basically when they ask you to evaluate it, they're just going to ask you to plug in the number and see what you get. Um, so that's the evaluating, that's, that hasn't changed um, with what we've done. All, sem all semester, all, all book so far is anytime they ask you to evaluate it, you just plug a number in and see what you get. Then after that they will ask you to graph e to the x which is uh, able to on your graphing calculator you go y equals and you'd hit second and then the ln button which would give you e and then usually it gives you a caret or if you've got a newer ti It'll give you a shadow box looking thingy. And then you hit the X button, which again is right next to the alpha. Uh, and then that would give you this kind of symbol. Hit graph. And you're going to see something that looks like this. And if you looked at last section, it is almost going to be identical to um, 3 to the X or 2 to the X. And the reason why is because. Um, e again is 2.718 blah 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 which is really close to 3 um, so it's going to look very similar to 3 to the x if you actually type both of those two in your calculators uh, you would get something very very similar they would look almost the same um, there would just be the 3 would go up just a little bit sharper than than e uh, but the domain for this again is all real numbers the range is from zero to infinity and the asymptote is y equals zero and that's the same as what we had last section the only difference is now we've just got an e in place of a, of a number um, so just so that you're aware of that everything about that is the same uh, if we were to do shifting any type of shifting or reflection like we talked about last section it's all the same the only difference again is the fact that instead of having a number there, we're using e to represent that number. Okay, so um, and again, e is in your calculator. It's already preloaded. It's not like you have to generate it yourself. It, it's it's done. So if they give you something like this, they say f of x equals negative e to the x. A negative on the outside flips it over the x-axis for a reflection. So again, that would come down here and go down forever. Again, domain, all real numbers, range. This time would be from negative infinity to zero. And the asymptote would be y equals zero. Only because, again... You know, it's just going down instead of going up. Again, if we had a like a plus two instead, 
that we just shipped everything up to and, and everything's good. So it's very similar to what we did in Chapter 2 and also what we did last section in, in 4.1. The only difference, again, instead of having a physical number there, it's going to be represented by the letter E because that number is one of those ones that kind of goes on forever. The last thing that they give you is they give you a formula, and this is this formula is for compounded continuously. So if you've got an investment, for instance, that's compounded continuously, which means kind of like, like as fast as you can snap your fingers, um, you're going to put it into this formula. Okay, I just remember it as PERT. But again, very similar to the last section. If you were given a principal of, let's say you started with $1,000, you have an interest rate of 12%. For three years, how much money would you have in your account at the end? Um, we're just going to plug the numbers in. So I'm putting a thousand in for P, E, 0.12 in for the R, and three in for the T. Now, when you're typing this one in, just so that you guys are aware of it, this is the biggest problem right there. Um, usually, when people type this, they type 1,000. Then they get the E in there, which gives it the caret, and then it gives an automatic parenthesis, especially in the older calculators. Then they go 0.12, close it, and then they go like this. This actually is not correct. Okay, This would be an example of something that does not work out right. This would give you a lot more money. And if you're my accountant and you're doing that and I show up with that much money, I'm going to take all my money out and then you're going to be stuck with it. But what happens on this is that it's taking this right here first and then timesing the whole thing by three and a thousand and that's why it's wrong if you're going to type this in right especially with the older calculators when you get e oh you wouldn't need that parenthesis when you get that e in there and it gives you the caret and, and it automatically gives you the parentheses just hit the time sign three and then close it now you should be good and it will give you the correct answer which is about $1,433.33. Which, if you looked at the previous section and you looked at the annually, it's not that much more, but it's still more than what you had to begin with. If I remember right, the, the annually was uh, 1404 and some change. This one's 1433 so it's about $29 roughly or more uh, than what you had before. So... Uh, keep that in mind. Continuously is not going to give you a whole lot plus because we're not talking about real big numbers there. Um, especially when the interest rate is a lot lower than 12%. Um, but again, you're just going to be plugging in the numbers and finding out how much uh, money is in the account at that point. So anyway, that is it for Section 2. It's pretty short.